Welcome to the McLean Textile Gallery. Today, we're honored to have Lauren Kingsland in the gallery with her work. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to have my pieces here in this beautiful gallery at the McLean Textile Gallery. How exciting. Um, most of the work that you will see in this exhibit includes um, the continuous line design of the South Indian Kolam tradition. Um, this is a, a women's drawing practice that's done on the ground at the doorway each morning. And Tamil Nadu is in the southeastern part of India. I was fortunate enough to get to visit there in 2008 and came back with this design tradition uh, that's become so inspirational for me for all these years. Wow. So, Lauren, will you walk us through some of your work um, in the gallery today and describe the background or some detail to our audience? Be happy to do that. Be happy to do that. I'm going to start with this piece. It's called Alchemy. Um, I was inspired by the writings of Carl Jung and his description of alchemical processes of fire and water and so forth as part of personal development. So the background of this has fabrics in it that are that kind of evoke water and fire and ash and so forth. Um, it, the dots in the design, in the Kolam design, are gold because of course gold is the goal of alchemical transformation and, and gold is the uh, symbolic of the personal development. This piece is called Warmth of Love. It is a traditional uh, design. I had a, uh, access to uh, a lot of pu published Kolam designs from the work of anthropologists who had collected these folk art designs and published the work. So this is the, the line drawing is not my own design. It is taken from the tradition of the Kolam. But using a, an ombre fabric to make the line has allowed me to get kind of gradations of color through it. This piece is called Fruit of the Spirit. I was inspired by the um, passage in Galatians, which refers to um, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness. Uh, this design was actually made with a knitting ribbon for, the, for quilters who may be interested in the technical parts of this. This line is a flat woven rayon ribbon mm -hmm. because I had a lot of, a, a lot of um, loops to do and this material allowed me to make such tight, tight loops. So uh, the background here is handmade Thai silk. Oh gosh. Um, so it's, it's kind of a yellow green in yes. one direction and hot pink in the other direction. If you, when you look at the selvages, mm -hmm. you can see that, the, so this is a, a shot material. And as you walk past this, it will change color a little bit just because of the nature of the, the fabric in the background. Um, this piece was in the Sacred Threads exhibit a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. This piece is called Coda. Here. This is a companion piece to Warmth of Love. They are the same design. In this case, I used a shot silk um, that's a turquoise and red that produces what seems to be a purple line. And it's the same design as the other one, except when I was doing the construction, my attention wandered and I forgot to put that loop in. There's supposed to be a loop connected like this. Forgot to put that in, so I added it later. Um, I'm a musician, and so the musical term seem, of coda seemed to be a very uh, apt way to describe the little extra bit that you put in after the piece is done. This piece is called Twists and Turns. I had an opportunity to, um, to go to the Mardi Gras celebration in Mobile, Alabama. This was just my impression of that. The line here is a whole series of um, embellishment threads, candlelight, and other kinds of shiny threads. And the dots are 
um, vintage dichroic glass German beads. This, um, this column uses yet another material for the line. This is a, um, a t-shirt, it's called a t-shirt yarn. It's commercially sold and it's a strip of cotton knit that's pulled and that's hand couched on there. All the dots are um, vintage old beads, old mm -hmm. pewter beads or, or yeah. some pot metal, not, uh, not a valuable thing. And this seemed like music. It's got the rhythm and repetition. So this is called world music. Um, you'll notice as we've been talking about these that all of the designs have reference dots and then continuous lines connecting the reference dots. These designs are drawn on the ground freehand and it's challenging to get a symmetric, to draw a symmetrical design uh -huh. by hand. It's not that difficult to lay down a regular grid of spots. So when these are drawn in rice flour at the doorway in the morning by Indian women, they make a little pile in a regular grid and then draw around that so that they can get spacing. And the rules are um, no dot left out mm -hmm. and no loose ends. This is actually five continuous lines. There's a square here. Oh, yeah. And then there's this looks like a little fan or something. And this is rotational symmetry. Bing, bing, bing. So that's another way of having a symmetrical design. It's right. rotational symmetry as opposed to you know, one axis. And five rows of five dots, no loose ends, nothing left out. Wonderful. The line here is a piece of um, silk that I bought in India. It was, it was silk for a sari blouse, for mm -hmm. a, you know the, the, the little garment that fits, that goes underneath the wrapped sari. And this is the dots in this case are buttons. Okay. When I started this tradition, I needed I knew there needed to be a lot of little circles. And I'm an experienced quilter. I was an experienced quilter when I started doing this years ago. I can easily cro uh, applique little circles, but I just did not want to set myself up to oh. applique a million little circles. Just, just no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> so I thought, what other little round thing can I use? And the button, of course, immediately came to mind. Right. And this one is different. This is a very beloved um, design within the Kolam tradition. The other Kolam you have seen, you had visible dots. In this case there are dots but the dots are uh, play, covered up by the line. This is actually, so there, there, there's a row of dots radiating out in eight arms okay. and there are five dots, one, two, three, four, five. And this is one continuous line. Little thing. This is a design uh, that's known as the Lotus and it is uh, often used as a design in, in, the, um, in the worship of the goddess Lashmi. Notice the quilt makers mm -hmm. and notice that the background is actually um, log cabin courthouse steps. One of the names for this lotus in, in the um, Tamil language is Kamala. So our vice president's first name means lotus. When I first began doing these, um, these designs, I was fortunate enough to be able to talk to my friend Shanti Chandrasekhar, who is also from Tamil Nadu. She's a painter, an artist, and she loves Kolam, has done a lot of Kolam in her paintings. She's very interested in sacred geometry. Uh, and so I had somebody to ask, so, you know, do these have individual names, except for this one? No, they don't. And what's with the dots? The dots, when you're drawing these, Shanti's grandma told
told her that each dot represents something that is of concern to you in that day. So we said we might call it our prayer list, something that we're concerned about, something that we're grateful for, just you know what is on our mind as we begin the day. Mm -hmm. So by having each dot represent something like that, then we can model for ourselves how we will go through the day. Here we go. Um, mm -hmm. In a continuous way, nothing, no loose ends, nothing left out, all of our concerns and joys and sorrows addressed. Mm -hmm. This particular set of buttons um, is, is made out of an early plastic called Bakelite. Yeah, I know that. And they're all different. And they appeared, this, this jar of old buttons appeared on my studio table one day. I used to have a studio up in the museum in Sandy Spring. Right. And, you know, people would come in and talk to me, and they knew that I collected buttons for this. And so somebody just was cleaning and brought me these buttons. How fabulous is that? <laughs> During the pandemic, I was at home in my studio and thinking about places that I had been able to travel during the years, since I was not going any place in 2020, uh, I had a chance to visit Norway. I'm, my family is Norwegian and Icelandic, so you know, I, I actually did get to visit Norway. And I was on a cruise on a, on a ship that goes up the coast of Norway, up to the North Pole. And the, the Gulf Stream, that warm river that runs through the Atlantic, runs into the coast of Norway about halfway up. Mm -hmm. So it's, the water is very warm off the coast of Norway, not contrary to what you might think. And there are little islands there where they grow strawberries and vegetables and stuff right there at, at the Arctic Circle. And there are jellyfish in the water in that place that are this big, honestly. They are huge. You look over the side of the ship and there are, the water is just filled with these gorgeous big jellyfish. Wow. So I was remembering those beautiful big jellyfish mm -hmm. with this um, you know, kind of a top-down look. There is a circular line. So that's what I was thinking about when I created this. And then this really structured kind of Scandinavian yes. looking land border and the deep, deep ocean and the beautiful big, mm -hmm. big jellyfish. Now here is another piece um, that really features the buttons. Um, all of the buttons here are um, mother of pearl, which you know is a, a of course a natural substance that is made into buttons frequently. And after I had decided to use buttons as the dots in this tradition, it might have been two years later that I was reading about Kolam and I realized that the dot which is sometimes known as the bindu or the bindi, singular or plural. The dot uh, philosophically represents that place of connection between the seen and the unseen world. Okay. Which you know, in, in Hindu philosophy is is an uh, an aspect of Hindu philosophy that connection between mm -hmm. the seen and the unseen. So how completely amazing that. As a Western Christian woman, I would have chosen a device that is a connector device to represent that connection between the seen and the unseen. This button was on one of my dresses when I was a little girl. As a, as a quilter, I feel like we're really fortunate to have this rich, rich um, palette of printed fabric. We, we can evoke ideas. We are doing collage. We can evoke ideas by our choice of patterns, including our choice of patterns. Lotus. Serene Lotus, yet another version of the, the Lotus that you saw earlier. Um, another truly awesome button that, that is I cool. truly don't know where it came from. It just appeared and I'm grateful for it. 
Um, this piece has, as many of my pieces do, this piece has a, a flange sort of to set off. This is inserted into the binding just as a, you know, a little space between the main field and the, the color of the binding. And if you have, if you haven't tried putting a flange in your quilts, do. It just really makes, it makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. It sets it off. It's like that double mat right. in, a, in framing. It's, it you, we, to, to the non-quilter, we must say, oh, it's so difficult. But really, it's a, it's a one inch piece folded in half and inserted in the seam. Okay. So no, it does. It really sets it off. It really sets it off as you walk through. You'll notice that most pieces do yeah. have a little flange. It says, I care enough about my work, and you can care enough about your work to add just a little accent color and make it look really professional. Here is another lotus. This is much smaller. This is two pieces of candlelight. Um, couched on a couch with a monofilament, sometimes with a monofilament over that. So you don't see the color of the stitching, you just see the, the um, you just see the shape of the line. It's hypnotic. So this, this is a very personal piece for me. Um, this is not a column, but I'm also interested in circular designs and labyrinth designs and spirals also show up in my work a lot. So this is a, I started with a piece of couched, um, shiny mm -hmm. embellishment cord. I figured out about how big the spiral was going to be and then measured out twice of that and started here and then couched in parallel lines around to get that spiral because I was going to be doing a spiral path, you know, in and back out, like a lab, the simplest labyrinth. Uh, so I did that first. I bound it. I put the flange in. Let me show you the back. I love the back. Isn't that? Oh. It's one of my all time. Whoop. Yeah. Pay no attention yeah. to that. There you go. There's the back. <laughs> one of my favorite I fabrics. Like I love this fabric and I couldn't cut it up because it was too beautiful. Yes, I love it. Too that beautiful. Too. But it, so it's the back. And uh -huh. this, I knew this was going to be a special piece. So the, that fabric is the back. And then I decided I needed to do something to make a difference between the path and the background around the path. So this was a journal. And every day or every couple days for about six months, I embroidered, hand embroidered, a word or two about something that was happening that day. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So there are, and if there was not anything particular happening that day, I would or, embroider in the names of my grandchildren. There's Piper, there's Kiernan, there's Ivy, mm -hmm. and just all kinds of right. things. Really going, meaningful things. Meaningful things to me. Or just reminders of what was going on in life. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah. that I was inspired to do this by a piece that was in the Sacred Threads exhibit a couple of years ago. That was a big rectangle that was just covered with words. There was no secondary design. It was just this big thing, and she had done words every day for a year. Okay. Wow. Uh, it was very powerful. So I encourage you to, you know, to, to make a little piece like this. Right. It, it just drag it around and, you know. It's a journal it, it, yeah. done with needle and thread. It's a journal done with needle and thread. Okay. I am also, I'm interested in circular design and I'm interested in labyrinths. So this is a, this is a current piece. I made this piece um, in 2021, actually. I just finished this a couple weeks ago. And so this is, in fact, a labyrinth, which, you know, is not a maze. A labyrinth has one path in to the center. You cannot get lost in the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. you, 
you go and you may not know how you're going to get there, but you will get there. And then you may not know how you're going to get back out. You may, from here, you can look out and like, what's, you know, how am I ever going to get out of this? But you will, mm -hmm. you will. Right. In this case, I was trying to push myself to work with the neutral palette that so many designers and home deck designers in particular um, are using these days. Mm -hmm. And as you could see from my other work, I like color. I like you know hues, I like playing with juxtapositions of color. So this was a this was a difficult challenge right. for me. Restraining. It, that's <laughs> right. And you know, that's fine. It's a good thing. Um, as an artist, you're supposed to challenge yourself. You know, supposed mm -hmm. to um, do the thing that's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's where you learn. If you just keep doing the same old thing all the time, you don't learn anything. So this is reverse applique, uh, a, a, grade, a gradated and ombre fabric on top, this brown to tan, and then underneath is a piece that's black and white that has little clocks on it. Oh, good. And I chose a black and white fabric underneath because the parts of it that are white will show up against the dark part of this and the parts of it that are black will show up against the light parts of this. Oh, yes. Yeah. So in terms of value, the lightest value and the darkest value are in the piece that's underneath. And then mm -hmm. all the medium values are in the top piece. I drew the line that is like if you were, if that is the stones that mark out the pass. Doing a labyrinth means that you have to kind of do some mental gymnastics between figure and ground. Because we think of the labyrinth as the path, but actually if you're drawing it, you're not drawing the path, you're drawing what's around the path. Mm -hmm. So I drew that on here and then cut on my pencil line and, and tucked that under as I went. Okay. So I didn't have to worry about little pieces being in a nice arc or anything. It was just it is a really great technique for doing a labyrinth. And then we come wow. to this, <laughs> sort of like co no color. You, you can see why that was a, a challenge for me because this is really more what I what I want to do, <laughs> what, I, what what just happens. Um, so this is a this is called life's journey. I was thinking about my own travels. I've done a lot of car travels, car travel in the United States, mm -hmm. and so there are a lot of things about that in here. So it is kind of like a collage, and I was thinking about the modern quilt uh, design use of uh, sashing, okay. which is doesn't is not um, you know blocks of sashing. Those of us of a certain age grew up or came along using the sashing to connect, I guess. Um, sashing is to connect same size blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's not what's happening in the contemporary modern quilting style that is evolving around right. us. So I was playing with that. The, um, all of the fabrics in this Every one of them. came out of my scrap basket. So okay. when I look at this, I see all the customer uh, client pieces. I've done hundreds of quilts for okay. customers through the years. And so I cut off the extras and throw them in the scrap basket. So when I see this, I have a memory associated with pretty much every single fabric okay. here. What's on the back of it? <gasps> oh my gosh. That's so cool. Isn't that a great fabric? That's really And cool. it has an extra sleeve on it because originally I thought that these lines should go across. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I put it up on the wall. I thought, you know, this is much more interesting as long vertical yeah. lines. So um, it was made as a bed quilt. I have actually slept under this quilt. Mm -hmm. And it's great. And it fits on the bed a little better one way than the other, but, okay. um, but it's a bed quilt, and how fabulous is, is it? How lucky we are to be made, able to make huge, wonderful pieces of art yeah. and sleep under them. No, absolutely, and you know, I, 
I, I know when you use a quilt, when I use a quilt on my bed, I actually do, you know, I, I can't help but think of the person who made it. Right. You know, and or the, the or circumstances the, around making it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, uh, I tell people that they will dream better under a handmade quilt. So, you know, for a quilt maker, this is sort of an ordinary size piece. If, we, if I were a painter, this would be a gigantic painting. Yes. And the quilt maker is sort of normal. Right, right. And how, how long did you spend on this quilt? Was it over? This quilt was made um, in the, an hour here and an hour there when I was just sick of doing more orderly things. Mm -hmm. And I just sat at the machine and pieced and pieced. And yeah. It was, it was an improvisational thing. Right. So uh, there, for a long time, there was a box of finished chunks of this and a plastic bag full of pieces pulled out of the scrap basket that were going to go in here. Because uh -huh. I did curate those. I didn't just reach in randomly. I did go through and pull out. Right, right. Yeah. No, it's beautifully designed. It's gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, yes. I am so happy, so happy to be able to share this quilt with the McLean Textile Gallery. Oh, this gosh. quilt is called Love Notes. Notice it's got a pieced background behind the two columns. The columns are a little bit different from one another in structure. This one's very mm -hmm. orderly. This one's a little bit less so. This line has musical symbols in it. Mm -hmm. This line has little fake writing, whatever you call that. You know, little, little, oh. it looks like words on right. that. And so the name of this piece is Love Notes. Okay. Notes being musical notes, note being written notes. Mm -hmm. And I made this when I was very much in love. Oh my God. Uh, I, uh, I was quite smitten. This is the leftovers. I made a hundred inch square bed quilt that was all red. Oh, and these gosh. are just the leftovers from that. So wow. I, had, I had a lot to say about the color red at that point. And this, this was about communication between people in a relationship who might have one style of communication or another, and how does that work? Yes. So I entered this piece in the staff, the juried staff art show for this uh, people who work for the Smithsonian. I'm fortunate enough to teach for them, and they let me in on that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So this piece was hanging in the Ripley Center in the Smithsonian in March of 2020 when the building closed because of the pandemic. Oh, man. So this piece hung from March 20, you know, it, the exhibit had started before that, but for between March 2020 mm -hmm. and March 2021, this piece hung in a, a deserted building. Yeah. So I was really, really happy to get this back, and I'm so happy that it gets to be in this show yes. to share it with you. Yes, gives new meaning to that movie, Night at the Museum. Right, right? exactly. It a year at the museum. A year at the museum, it was just wow. trapped in there. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for, for this wonderful tour. Um, I learned a lot. I'm just fascinated with, with Colum. And um, I invite everyone who's watching this and your friends, to please visit the McLean Textile Gallery. We're on Elm Street in McLean, and you can find more information um, on www.themcleantextilegallery.com. And I will be posting um, some more information about Lauren on the website. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's been just wonderful. And this is a beautiful gallery space. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.